Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Carrie and this is my little corner of YouTube where I sit down and talk about my crafting. Today I've got knitting and crochet. Um, don't have quilting but knitting and crochet and some life changes that are going to be happening real soon. So um, I appreciate everybody that's here whether you're new or returning and um, today is April 12th 2024. Uh, it's a Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday is my favorite day. <laughs> I'm in a mood. Anyway, the sun's out. Feels good. Things are happening. I'm being weird. <laughs> so let's get the show on the road. Um, okay, I'm going to start with life changes because it kind of feeds into the uh, to my crafting and what I've got planned. So in 10 days, today did I say the 12th? Okay, so in 10 days on the 23rd, 11 days, whatever, I am having hip replacement surgery. So I am having a total replacement on my left side and this is something that's been planned for quite some time. I made the surgery appointment six months ago and it's finally here. So I'm excited. I'm nervous, I'm scared, <laughs> I'm anxious, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, I'm all those things. Um, I'm anxious to feel better and be able to uh, have my movement back that I'm, that that's more normal. I want to be able to just bust out in an interpretive dance when the song moves me and take long walks and take hikes and all those things that I am not able to do right now. And so that's happening. It is just a outpatient surgery, which is kind of weird to me. <laughs> um, but they say you'll be going home by five o'clock that day. So, um, which is good because I'll be able to recover at home. I don't have to spend the night in, in the hospital, cuts down the cost, all those good things. Praying and hoping that they know what they're talking about because <laughs> it just seems so bizarre to me. Um, I am having an anterior uh, approach to the hip which is more to the front as opposed to kind of the old style which was in the back the recovery is supposed to be easier you have way less chance of dislocating and um, you you are re you recover a lot quicker so that's exciting you know modern medicine and all that stuff so um, I have been thinking about this and getting anxious about it for six months <laughs> It's finally here so you know my sleep isn't so great and I'm thinking of all the things but it's gonna be fine I've never had a major surgery this will be my first one and I think that's pretty good I've only had oral surgery so this will be interesting um, we are pretty much set up for it I've got to go get a little bit more equipment which I found out that I can borrow check out from my local senior center so I don't have to pay, buy anything because a lot of the stuff I need I just need temporarily just like a week or two so um, I got to go do that today and um, it's gonna be good I will have a lot of time of sitting around letting my body recuperate let my body heal and so I've got all the crafting <laughs> kind of scheduled for this I know I'm gonna bounce back I, I have it in my heart in my mind that I'm gonna bounce back pretty quickly I'm hoping and so I probably won't even touch half the stuff I've got ready but I am ready like if I have to recuperate for a year I might be able to get it all done <laughs> so I'm gonna share with you some of the things I got going on I am working on some projects currently and uh, yeah so let's get into it um, I finished my three color cashmere shawl, which is on my little mannequin here. Um, that was a lot of fun to make. Um, well, it is a fun shawl to make. It's a three color, three color cashmere shawl. I did not make it out of cashmere, but I did make it out of fiber hustle yarn. So the light blue, this here is Paul Hollywood. This is all in fingering weight. The darker blue is Absolutely Live, which is based off of a Doors album. And this pink is called Now That's a Pop. 
was great working with the yarn. I loved, my favorite part was the pink. Like that pink was just a happy color and it was just really fun to work with. The pattern is very easy, just a little bit of texture, tiny little bit of lace, so I got through it okay. I even took the time to do the Pico bind off. Um, it's not hard, it's just more time consuming than just your regular bind off, but I think it looks really nice. The thing I don't like about this shawl, and I'll pop a picture in here of when it was blocking, you can see where the uh, garter tab cast on is, and then you build out from there, gave it like this weird hump where it would sit on the back of your neck or sit here, like the closest to you. And I don't know how to, like I would almost have to fold it under to wear it like that. I don't know why that's in the design. That seems very strange to me, but you know, it's part of the pattern. So I think it's beautiful. I loved working on it. I was pretty monogamous, which it's amazing how much you can get done when you're monogamous on something <laughs> because as you know if you've been here a minute not super monogamous but I really was just enjoying it so much and just stayed with it and got it done pretty quickly so that is my only fo I immediately cast on my swallowtail sweater I talked about starting that I don't know that I had quite started it um when we talked last time and um it's you know it's i'm 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 enjoying it it's kind of slow going because it's a lot of color work i am almost to the bottom oh you can't see me almost to the bottom of the butterfly which is going to look really good this is all fiber hustle yarn this is the colorway she looks stunning this pink the navy, I'm not sure what the navy is called, but it's a navy blue. And then this kind of off-white is called London Fog. So as you can see, I am almost done with the butterfly. Then it goes down into some more color work, um, brings the pink down a little bit. And then the body of it is going to be this. Um, which is that will buff out so i've got a couple skeins of that i kind of wanted to add this gold color because i thought it would be really pretty and i don't know where to do it i've been looking at the pattern and i thought i was going to do it on like some the diamond shapes that are just below all of this but then i would have to do three colors and I don't really know that I want to do three colors, so I'm not sure. But I think this would be, especially because this has got like so many different colors, I think it would just be really pretty. So, um, like I said, it is pretty slow going. I'm hoping my color work is working out okay when it blocks. I think so. I mean, I'm leaving it pretty stretchy. It's it's a lot. <laughs> and it's slow for me because I'll, like, I'll knit at night watching TV and stuff. And um, like when you're doing these, this is repetitive, right? And you're doing that for most of it. And then you get to the center of the front, which is the butterfly. And so when I'm doing this, it's like you get this kind of rhythm. And, and then I'll like get off count because I'm trying to watch TV. And, and I was like, oh shoot, so I have to take back a little bit. So it's kind of slow. And I have to concentrate, you know, I have to pay attention, which is hard because <laughs> my mind is everywhere. But um, I, I'm, I'm getting through it, and I am liking it. I love working with Erin's yarn. And, um, yeah, this will be really fun. I decided to do the white, which I'm really, really glad. It's not white, but the London Fog. I decided to do that as the color work instead of going the opposite because I didn't want this band of light color right across my boobs. Like I just don't need to accentuate that area of myself. So um, I think that doing it in a light color really, really works well. So that is Swallowtail by Jamie Hoffman. And you know, it's just, you just keep going. I think once I get done with this major part of the color work, um, it'll go a lot faster because then I do get a band of just stockinette plain and I'll just cruise through that. A lot of the sleeve is plain and you've got some color work along the cuff. 
Maybe I'll do this more on the cut. I don't know. I want to add. I want to add this somewhere. This is pumpkin spice lahey, and I don't know. It's like it needs to be an accent color, but I can't quite figure out where to put it. So um, yeah. So working on that. No, that doesn't go in there. That goes in here. Okay. Trying to keep myself organized. So I was feeling like there was I like I could get through a few rounds and I just sort of needed to take a break from it. So I could either just like I want to watch whatever we're watching. I'm too tired to really concentrate, whatever it is. And I thought I can't I need to have another project on the needles. I could have picked up socks, didn't feel like it. So I thought, oh, I know. Let me do a crochet project <laughs> because, you know, if you've been here a while, you know how good I am at crochet. <laughs> but I keep trying. So I keep trying it. I'm going to get it one of these days. And so I cast on the Painted Daisies Wrap by uh, Suzanne Reed. It is a free crochet project. And I am using a hobby cotton. It's either hobby or hobie. I don't really know how you pronounce it. I call it hobby, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I don't know, whatever. Um, it is a cotton king. So let me see, here we go. Cotton King, it is approximately, let's see, 100, 1,000 meters, which is like almost 1,100 yards, uh, 250 grams. It's 50% acrylic, 50% cotton. Um, I did make a shawl, the Boho Blush, that I finished last year with it and I thought I, I've had this and I'm like keep trying to find something to do with it <clears throat> excuse me so I thought this painted daisies would be good because that gradient would have time to go throughout the whole thing and I found that pattern by going on Ravelry and looking up the yarn and seeing what people made and then I found the pattern so after a couple of false starts I got going on it and I'm like okay I, I get this and the pattern has a like a graph is it a graph a chart like a chart because there's symbols for crochet and it's always been like looking at hieroglyphics to me like it makes no sense but the way she did it is like her notes handwritten that she just took a picture of I mean it's a free pattern so and actually that made way more sense to me than like the computer generated symbols and stuff so I was able to follow that and then once I got going I could see I could kind of see the pattern you know like I could see what I was making and and what stitches to go in that's always been the confusing part to me on crochet knitting you're knitting that stitch you might go like the stitch below or whatever but you're knitting that stitch crochet you put the hook like everywhere you put it skip a stitch and you go three stitches ahead and you and then like it's so confusing because I don't ever know where I'm supposed to put my hook so I started this got pretty far so it is giving a little bit of a stripey feel but it's like marled I guess it's more marled than than gradient so when this blocks out you're gonna see these daisies which I think looks really cool my idea and I don't know if it's gonna work and the whole reason why I did this is I want to see if I can go this way with it whatever like this way and say this is the whole thing if I fold it like this and leave a neck hole, seam this up, my little head's going to come out here, and then it would be just sort of this off-the-shoulder poncho kind of thing, capelet, I don't know, whatever you call it. Um, we'll see. If not, then it'll just be a wrap, but it'll, it'll be for the warmer weather and as, as an accessory, and I think it's going to be gorgeous. I put this, <laughs> I put this on hold because this takes a lot of concentration and I still was looking for that project that I could just sit and relax into it. Um, I enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun to work on for me, but I, I like to have two projects, which is usually what I work on. I, I'll switch and I usually have one that I've got to kind of pay attention to and then one that's just like easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I put this aside because I thought, you know, this is the um, more of a summertime thing, which, you know, we're, we're headed that way. But um, this is going to be so cool now that I kind of open it up. It's going to be really cool. 
So I put this aside and <laughs> I cast on something new. So I needed something very relaxing and just sort of like sit on autopilot, right? So I'll work on the sweater and I'll get a few rounds of that in and um, and then I need, I need, like, as I'm getting more tired, it's getting closer to bedtime, I need something that I can switch to that's just, like, I can do it without looking kind of a thing. So I cast on something that I've been, been wanting to make another of, the Zorzel shawl. And I have made this a couple of times. I have one, and then I made one for a friend. And I've been wanting to cast on another one. So I did. Oh my God, this is so good. So, um, uh, see, I think it is a paid for pattern. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I've had it for so long, I don't know. And the Zorzel shawl is by Lisa Hans or Haynes, I'm not sure. And this yarn is from Needles at the Ready. So this is Wild Orchid, the pink. Oh, this looks so good. So the pink is, and I'm just like into this hot pink, right? Uh, yeah, Wild Orchid. I've got it on a um, four ply, 100% superwash merino. And the navy is ink blot, but this this navy is got a purple undertone to it. Oh, this is so good. I love this combination, this navy. And I know it's very similar to that, but who cares? I'm not wearing them at the same time. And this is also 100% superwash merino. So I've got it started, obviously I'm almost, I think I just have a couple more rows of the stripes and then I'll go into a, the solid. And so the shawl has room for a solid of each color and then you go back into the stripe. It is a very fun shawl to make um, because it's got good impact, it's a great, it's a crescent shape, so I can wear it really easily. The other one that I have, I do wear um, just because it is an easy one. I don't have to fuss with it. It just sort of goes on and looks great. And that's cool. This contrast is so good. Oh my goodness. So that is yarn by Needles at the Ready. Kevin is a great dyer as well. I'm so lucky that I have these friends that are amazing dyers. I also last weekend went up to uh, Aaron and Chip. Uh, they are in the process of moving. Uh, they are Fiber Hustle. They mentioned it on their last podcast. And I said, can I help? If I came up, can, can I do something? So I went up and helped. I can't do like a lot of lifting and, and heavy moving because of my hip and everything. But I can unpack stuff. I can organize stuff. I can give you all kinds of ideas I can tell you what to do so I went up there and did that and I had a blast they're such great guys but um I just I, I went up they were able to start putting stuff in the new house which is just right around the corner so we just could walk over there and I brought my cot and I just parked myself in an empty bedroom and <laughs> just I'm like camping indoors and I just kind of helped wherever I could. And so I was up there for a few days, which was really nice. And then because they're moving and clearing out stuff and because they're amazing people, Chip gave me some of his new chip bags. Now, what I got is the prototype. So I, if you've ordered the new cube shaped chip bags, you got the real deal. Um, but this is great. So when he was trying to develop what he was gonna do and how he was gonna do it and measurements and all that stuff, he made some prototypes. So love this fabric so much. And so this is the eight inch cube. Um, I don't have the canvas inside. There's some differences in there and this one doesn't have a pocket. But look at this, this is their their, uh, what is that, drawstring pull. It's got their logo on it, and it's a great size. It's so great. He also gave me, this was another prototype. He was doing the drawstring part differently at that time. I just folded it over like more like a collar, but this, to me, this reminds me of Northern Lights, right? 
And so this is the big 10 inch one and this sucker is big and it's full. So he had made a couple of quilts a few years ago. Um, I'll send, I'll put up a picture here with this plaid K facet fabric and I just love it. I think it's the colors because the colors are so rich. I love the plaids and he had a bunch of the leftover fabric. So this is full of his leftover pieces. Some of them are pieces. I think he was going to maybe make another one. I can't remember. Um, so he's even sewn some of them together already. And um, so I said, yes, I'll take that. So we just piled it all in here and I'm going to make I'll, I'll make it as big as I have enough fabric for and make a throw quilt. What I thought, because this is a woven, so which a woven is, um, it's a looser, thinner uh, fabric. And I thought what I would like to do is once I get it done and go to quilt it is I'm going to put double gauze on the back instead of just regular quilting cotton, because that is very soft and drapey. And this will be more like a warm warmer weather quilt but i'm excited to dig into this and organize it a bit and um kind of get a plan once i get a plan it's just going to be like chain piecing which is my favorite thing to do he also had this leftover fabric which doesn't isn't part of this collection but i think i can use it maybe it'll be a border maybe it'll i don't know so i grabbed some of that you know, that's what the, the plus is of helping somebody purge their stuff. It's good and it's bad because I certainly don't need more stuff. But, you know, I'm happy to take it off his hands because that's the kind of friend that I am. So in preparation as well for the upcoming surgery and knowing that I'm not going to be able to do some of the things that I can do right now as I recover because I have to give my body a chance to heal and there's going to be certain um, positions that I can't be in and the, all that kind of stuff. So I was trying, I would thought I'm going to crank up some uh, sock tubes. I don't really crank them because I don't have a, a sock machine, but I do them on my um, flatbed knitting machine. And I was trying to tidy up in here because we're going to set me up kind of in here for the first few days because I've got everything I need upstairs. If I can get myself home and upstairs right away, which they're gonna have me do stairs before I even leave um, the day of surgery. So if I can get myself upstairs, then Jim can just wait on me. I've got a baby monitor that I got so that I can go, hey, <laughs> I need a drink of water, whatever. So he's gonna be home to help me for the first several days. And, and then I'm gonna be like set up here and I thought I need it to tidy up. This it's just gotten out of control. I just go from one thing to the next and don't put away the what I was doing before. And you know, you know how that goes. So I had several uh, single socks or socks that were not done that were like still on the needles and hanging out and they've been hanging out for a really long time. And I thought, you know what? I am never going to hand knit these because I've had some socks that I'm like, oh, I'll just hand it those. <laughs> like I had a pair here. Let's go through some of them. I had this pair that I was doing two at a time, right? And I don't like two at a time. I didn't like the, the weight of it. I just, it wasn't my, it wasn't comfortable. I just didn't care for it. So they sat. I thought, you know what? Tear it out and just make sock tubes. So I put the extra yarn inside this pink is just waste yarn that'll come off so that I have the yarn that I will now put in for the heel, the toe and the cuff. So I tore those out. So I've got a sock tube of that. Same thing with this. I was hand knitting this. This was some yarn that Michelle gave me and I was, I just was not enjoying hand knitting them. So took it out because I thought I'm never going to finish these. And I was still working on this first sock. I still had the second one to go. So I crank those or, you know, knit those into a tube. This is some mustache yarn. Um, let's see. This is, gosh, only knows. I, I don't even know. <laughs> but I have it. <laughs> and then I also cranked up some, I've got these on the needle because I'm working on, what am I working on? Working on the cuff. Where's the needle? There it is. 
And this is some yarn from Erin. This is, uh, I have it in my little chipette. And it is Snowflake, Snowflake Lane. So this was um, a colorway they came out with in the at the holiday time. And it matched some fabric that Chip had made some baskets out of. And it's not Christmassy necessarily, uh, but it, it makes a really cool sock. So I'm currently got those going. So now I've got tubes that all I have to do is put in the finishing things and I will do that I don't mind doing that that's good knit night stuff that's good which you would think when I needed a break from my other knitting that I would do that but I have to start something new right so I have my little tub ready to go with several pairs of socks that need to be finished and then I'll have some new socks in my drawer for winter I don't wear socks generally in the summertime so I'll be, I'll be set. I do have a pair of socks that I had done. I did one sock on my machine and something went wrong. I don't know. I have to redo it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to tear that out and I'm going to try and do a shorty sock. There's a pattern that I want to try. That is done by hand, but it's shorty and I should be able to do it. So, um, you know, now that I'm so good at crochet, because you could see that I was so good at crochet, I decided to take on another crochet project. Now this is going to come later. Like I need to finish the swallowtail sweater first. That's a that's a big one. I don't want to get stuck on that. And I'm enjoying that and everything. But um, I saw on Instagram, I believe, Premier Yarns was having um, a sale or they had this particular yarn on sale. And I also saw you know how it's like they they Instagram puts on stuff that's like based on what you what you look at or whatever and I saw this pattern called the Franny Granny Poncho and I'm like I think that's pretty cool <laughs> I think it's kind of cute I think I need to make that <laughs> so I got on Premier's website and I ordered some yarn so I'm going to keep the picture up here so you have reference because I'm not 100% sure how the color, what I'm doing for colors. I did swatch. This is gonna be the main color. So this is the color that's going up here. And this is called Stitch Please. It is 100% wool. They don't say what kind of wool. It's 100 grams at 220 yards and it's not super wash. And it feels really nice. You can tell it's not super wash because um, it is a little, little toothier because it's not super washed, but it's not super scratchy. Um, I guess if you were really sensitive, you might not like it, but it's actually a very nice yarn. I got it for $3.50, $3.50 a skein. Like, how can I not get that, right? So this will be the main color. And then as I was trying to pick colors to do the striping that goes through it, I couldn't decide and so I bought a whole bunch of humor <laughs> because it was only $3.50 so I have these colors to choose from so this is the main color right this purple this silver color is called what is it their names are kind of cute this one's probably not gray area this will be the sleeves so um so that that's going to be that's not, that's designated for something and i do i sew it together with this i can't remember so i've got a light pink a brighter pink a gold i've got a like an eggplant purple and a couple of like tealy blue colors and then this sort of olive sagey green this is a little duller than i thought it was going to be and so i don't feel like it goes with this palette at all i can't decide how many colors to use for the striping so um, the pattern is uh, comes to almost $11 US um, but it is written in US terms so that's nice it's multiple pages because she gives you tons of information um, and helpful tips and some pictures and stuff to go by but I feel like it's pretty easy this was actually my first granny square like like traditional granny square and it went pretty fast so um i'm 
really close on gauge. It says that this should make a three inch square and it, this comes to almost three and a quarter. I did try it with a hook size down and I didn't like how it felt. It just felt too stiff. So being that it's not a fitted garment, I think I'm good with this. I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook, which is what the pattern calls for and what this yarn recommends. So I'm sticking with that. I like the way that this feels. I was hoping that with the non super wash would keep it from getting like misshapen and stretch out too much and stuff. And I'm, I'm happy with it. Like I could see making a sweater with this. I thought this would be good. This is worsted weight um, because it's going to be kind of holy, so it won't be as hot and it's not fitted, so it won't be as hot. And I think I think I'll wear this because I love wearing my swanchos. And this is more like a swancho because you've got sleeves. So I have to decide how I want to do colors. I don't want it to look too clowny. Um, I was kind of thinking, let's see. So this is the main. I was thinking this pale pink this kind of teal color and this gold color. I thought that was really pretty, right? And then I thought, well, what if I went with brighter? <laughs> I could even do another pale pink and I could do brighter. Um, I, I don't know, I have not quite decided, but um, I'm, I am kind of excited to start it. So I might just, I have to crochet, I don't know, 10 or 11 of these and then you do some some triangle shapes to make that top part. I think it's gonna go really fast once I get into it. Um, and then, because I didn't wanna pay for shipping, I had to get more. And I thought, you know what? And I hadn't even felt it before. I didn't even, I was just like <laughs> hoping that it worked out. Um, I have talked about wanting to make a sweater for Jim, um, but he's barely knit worthy because he doesn't wear what I make him, most likely. But when we go camping, and he's always cold, right? And we go camping and like having, a, like I would, when we went camping this last time, oh, we did go camping and slept in the car. I showed pictures and I showed all that stuff on Instagram. <laughs> We're just like, let's just go for the night. Camped in the snow, slept in the car. It was amazing. I loved every minute of it. But um, I was nice and toasty because I had a wool sweater on. I wore a sweater that I knitted, and I'm like, I'm, I'm good. And he's, like, putting all these layers on. I'm like, he needs a sweater. So I bought a sweater's quantity of this color, which is Deep Blue Sea. And it, oh, it's just a really beautiful color. And so I don't know what pattern. I just bought, I've got fuzz floating around. I bought 10 skeins, so I have over 2,000 yards. I thought if I have something left over, same with these other ones, I'll make hats, I'll make gloves, I'll, you know, I'll use it up. At three fifty dollars a skein, I'm not like out a whole lot of money. So um, I want to do my swancho first because I come first, but I want to find an, like just a basic worsted weight sweater that looks good on a guy. And he's a slim build, so I, it, you know, it does, it's not going to be real big. It will knit up really fast because this is worsted. And he doesn't even know I'm doing it yet, but it'll be great for when we go, even if he just wears it camping and it's just like his outdoor, I don't care if he trashes it. I mean, the whole sweater is going to cost me three, $35. Like I can't resist this. So I'm kind of excited about this. I have to be, I'll be on the search and I'll find something. And then I even thought, he's not one to wear a lot of color. Like this is pretty colorful for him because he wears blue or gray <laughs> always <laughs> so I even thought this kind of you know has a little bit of color this gold like that could be especially this gold like that could be something I don't know that I really I don't really want to do color work but I thought a stripe would he wear it I don't know I'll, I'll have to I'll have to include him in that decision making process once I get there even this little bit lighter color, he'd be more likely to go with this where the contrast isn't really big. Or not, just do plain. I always wanna make it colorful and rainbows, but he's not a rainbow guy. He's very beige. <laughs> so this is pretty colorful. 
Um, if there's a sweater that you've made for a guy in your life that like, hey, this fits really well, you know, I know Maxim Sear makes some really nice patterns for men. Um, Brooklyn Tweed. So I'll look at those and see if there's something, just a basic something to make with worsted weight. So that's, that's in the future. Um, so really that's about all I have going on right now. I mean, some big stuff with my surgery coming up, but um, I'm just gonna sit and make stuff. I mean, why not? It's what makes me happy. And then I can feel guilt free for sitting around. And then I was like, well, I don't wanna recover too fast cause I kinda wanna milk it a little bit. If he's gonna be like making dinner and <laughs> cleaning and stuff, I don't wanna recuperate too fast. <laughs> I gotta I have to have a little bit of time of being pampered <laughs> but knowing me I'm gonna get up and doing it um, I actually tomorrow we're gonna go buy a uh, found I found a, tr a used treadmill on Facebook marketplace that we're gonna go get so that I have a, a way of walking because walking's really good um, just here in the house it's like I can't walk laps in the house like that's gonna drive me crazy I'd rather sit you know watch a movie or something and just do some slow walking and recuperate that way and then during the summer and luckily I'm having surgery right, right at the beginning of the weather getting nice so I will be outside but you know when it gets hot I don't generally go walk in the afternoon and I can do that when I'm when I've got something and I'll have it downstairs somewhere so Hopefully that works out. Like I said, we gotta go look at that tomorrow. And and then we're going camping next weekend. So I have an appointment on Thursday with the surgeon to kind of, I don't know, finalize things. They measure, I don't, whatever they do. And I do that on Thursday. We'll leave from the appointment and head out into the wild wild west we're gonna go along the deschutes river which we like to do in the springtime um lot we went last year we're gonna go again this year and we're gonna just tent camp we're not taking our trailer uh, we'll just sleep in our tent and it's really really nice this time of the year it, I, we can camp right along the river and oftentimes at this time of year there's a lot of bighorn sheep in the cliffs because it's very cliffy around there and and mountainous and rocky and we've had times when we've um when we've gone and have seen babies and it, we'll just sit there and look through binoculars like all day and like it's like watching tv but you're watching the matt matt geo channel or something so we'll do that come home on sunday and then tuesday i have my surgery so I wanted to try and get like one in before I go before I'm laid up and uh, so that's gonna work out it's we've been watching the weather and we were gonna go this weekend but the weather's still a little cold little wet over there even though we're on that's on the drier side of the state um, but this next weekend that we're gonna go should be good and should be dry so I'm very much looking forward to that and then I hang out all summer and get stronger and heal and just that that's like my full-time job it will be for the summer so anyway i hope you're all well i hope everything's going fine for you and um i will still podcast um as soon as i'm able to like have something to show which hopefully if i can get all this stuff going i'll have stuff to show you because i won't be distracted by anything else I'll be distracted, but you know what I mean, right? I'm going to concentrate on me and all this stuff. So um, I will see you guys hopefully in a month because I should be able to sit in a chair. Um, I haven't been able to sew a whole lot because sitting here, sitting in my chair after a little while is not comfortable. So that will be better. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. So. Until next time, please take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you, and I will see you later. Bye.